are, Tony. Signed, sealed, and delivered. And all legal. I'm getting the best of the deal, Pop. A 50% interest in your lodge is worth a lot more than $3,000. Our lodge, Tony. Willie and I want you at Mile High. The money part isn't important. How soon are you coming back, Tony? Oh, a week, maybe. Faster if Sally can get ready in time. I'll wire you. Make it fast. We've got the lumber for those cottages all easy, cut. Easy, well, easy. We've waited years for this. We can wait a few weeks longer. Well, it's getting late, and we've got to get back to the lodge. Tony, we'll be seeing you. They sure will, Pop, and soon. So long, partner. So long, pal. Hurry back. Danny Morgan. When'd you get in? What are you doing? It's been a million years. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Right over there. Well, look, I figured I'd see you in Chicago. Charlie, check Mr. Regan's bag. Yes, sir. Oh, boy, Jeff hugged oh. well, I've been running this joint for the last six months. So you'd still be with Big Jim. I am. He owns the place. Oh, I didn't know he was out here. Big Jim? If he ever left Chicago, it'd fall in the river. <laughs> Hey, last I heard you were still in the Army Japan someplace. When'd you get out? Oh, about two weeks ago, Dan. I stayed in for an extra hitch. Got to stick around a while? No, I'm catching the 8 o'clock plane for Chicago. Usual, Mr. Morgan? Right. Why not stay here, Tony? Lots of sunshine, steady supply of suckers, and loads of lovely, lonely, loaded ladies. <laughs> you want a job? No, thanks, Dan. I'm just a small-time businessman now. What kind of business, Tony? Well, it's a place called Mile High Lodge, about 40 miles north of here. You know, hunting, fishing, it's a beautiful place. Never figured you for a backwoodsman. How come? Ah, uh, just happened. You see, it was a good pal of mine. He was killed in the South Pacific. He used to always talk about the lodge and Pop, his kid brother. Then I went up there and I met them. Larry was right, fell in love with the place. They needed me, I needed a future, so bought an interest. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Seven years of Army savings right on the line. Why the trip to Chicago? Oh. Still selling. Always will be. What about Big Jim? Well, he'll change his mind. If he doesn't, we'll still get married. It's awful pretty. Yeah. Well, I sure hope she likes it. What about you, Dan? Married yet? I've got my eye on somebody. Yeah? Hey, that is a beauty. He didn't buy this in any GI salary. No. You're wrong. On the 637th roll, it'll be number 26. 34, dear. My graph couldn't be wrong. It's 26. 34. 26. Darling, this is purely a scientific system. Now, if you'll consider the hypothesis... Oh, consider the What you don't understand, this is done mathematically. Systems. They're all alike. Chicago, New York, Reno. Say, do you let anybody win? The law is over this town like a blanket. Check us every hour. Yeah? What happens between checks? Well, you know Big Jim. He's satisfied at percentage breaks. I know Big Jim, but what about you? Well, the guy's got to float himself along once in a while. Yeah. Argument upstairs, Mr. Morgan. The guy said he had a bet. You better go up. OK. Now, don't go away, Tony. Take your time, Dan. I'll just look around. Say, Mr. Morgan, is this OK? Sure. Tony, how are you? Oh, fine, Al, fine. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> hey, Bowley. Get your best out. Come here, Tony. Come on, Al. Eight. Eight him from the cable. Six. Six he's looking for an eight. Play the team, folks. Play the come. Still looking for an eight. Dice, please be kind to me. Come on now, eight, eight, ten, ten the hard way. Five. Five. There's a wheel number, folks. Play the <laughs> Not field. again. Still looking for an eight. Come on now, eight, please. Let them roll. Watch your hand. Please, eight. 
Seven. Seven the loser. Well, we have a new shooter. Your dice, lady. I don't know a thing about gambling. Is it difficult to learn? No, just expensive. Oh, just pick any pair and throw them. Throw them. Roll seven or eleven and you win. Wait a second, lady. You look lucky to me. Well, we have a new shooter. Oh, oh no <laughs> dice. You haven't made your bet. Oh. Throw them hard enough to hit the edge of the table. Eleven, a winner. I won. Roll them. Keep rolling. You might be lucky. You can do it, lady. Let my pile ride do. Same shooter coming out for a new point. Seven. I've won again. Oh, this is fun. Say, you don't have to know anything about dice. You're hotter than a firecracker. How about taking off the limit? The limit? All right, folks, the limit is off. We're ready for a buck or a bucket full. Shoot them, lady, for a bucket full. I hope your confidence in me isn't misplaced. Roll them, sister. No snake eyes. Just a second. Do you mind if I change your bet? Change it? But I thought I was doing it right. Just a gambler's hunch. You're betting on 12 this time. Whatever you say. All right, folks, get your bet down. Play the line. Coming out for new point. Let them roll. There she blows. Oh, well, 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 the loser. Well, those boxcars got you. Why don't you get lost? I did lose, didn't I? No, you won. All this. We have a new shooter. No, I shot a 12 or something, and that's bad. Sometimes it's bad, but it was good for you. A 12 was 30 to 1. $120. $120? Uh huh. Why, that's marvelous. What do we bet now? You don't. You're quitting. But why? I was winning. Always leave a winner. Oh, I suppose you're right. But I don't understand. If 12 is a loser, how did I win? Well, 12 losers coming out. You were betting on it to come up. Oh, I see. 12 is a loser, but sometimes it's a winner. What's coming up? <laughs> come on, come on. You better cash in your chips. I still don't understand about the 12. Well, goodbye. Oh, thanks a lot. Bye. Goodbye. Yeah? The old Regan hunch is, uh, <laughs> what's the big idea? Oh, just giving the girl a thrill, Dan. Uh-huh. Never figured you for the wrong side of the table. You have changed. Yeah, I guess I have. You know, you gotta be away for a while to realize how little this all means. See what I mean? A lemon. Good luck, Dan. <laughs> so long, Tony, in case you change your mind. You've always got a job here. Thanks. Be good, Tony. That'll be a dollar. Now, you're sure you have the right address? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sally Lee, 1140 Dolan Street, United Chicago. Airlines, you got it. 128, now leaving for Salt Lake City. Oh, there's my plane. Connecting with Pleasant United trip. Thanks. And good luck. Direct to Chicago, New York. I quit. Always leave a winner. You learn fast. I had a good teacher. Where are you heading? Chicago. Oh, me too. Fine. This is my first night flight. It's wonderful. The blackness floating somewhere in space. I'll have to tell my children all about it. Children? I've got 26 of them. Now, that's not too many for a school teacher to have. Oh, a teacher. Now, we didn't have them like you when I was playing hooky. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, if it hadn't been for you, the winnings, I mean, I'd be going back to Chicago the way I came, with 31 other school moms and a motor coach. You gonna tell your class how you won the $120? I'm gonna keep that a deep, dark secret. Cigarette? Uh, no, thank you. Sleeping? No, just thinking. About going home? You mean Chicago? Mm -hmm. No, I'm getting out of there as fast as I can. Oh. Ever hear of Mile High Lodge? No. Most beautiful spot in the Sierras. 
trees a million feet high. Stars that come right down to you every night. Coolest Christmas air in the world. That's my home from now on. Must be lovely. Yeah, this will give you an idea. See, there's Pop and Willie. Look at those mountains. It's really beautiful. We've only got a half a dozen cabins now, but it's going to be bigger, a lot bigger. Yeah, the stream runs right by the place. Trout that big. Magnificent country. You make it sound like heaven. It is. Up there, you feel as if you could just stick up your hand and grab a slice of it. I'd like that. You would? Mm-hmm. You know, it isn't one of those dress-up places. A girl would have to appreciate it for what it was, the beauty of it, the life it could give her. I'm sure I'd like it. Yeah, she'll like it, too. That's why I'm going back to Chicago, get married, take her back with me. Trip. I enjoyed every minute of so it. So did I. You know, I was just thinking, I don't even know your name. I'm Man McKnight. I'm Tony Regan. Happy to meet you. Hello, Tony. Look, I'm taking a taxi. Can I drop you anywhere? Well, which way are you going? South side. Wonderful. Tony. Well, Chuck, Chuck Reckling. Tony, it's good to see you. Hi. Say, he got married, had a baby and everything. Oh, what do you mean, baby? I got two of them. One of them that high already. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> Chuck, I'd like you to meet uh, this. This isn't social, Tony. Oh? Excuse me a minute. Sure. Kerrigan wants to see you. Who's Kerrigan? Captain Kerrigan. What's the charge? No charge, Tony. Just an invitation. You'd better accept. Okay. Is the dame with you? No, just a girl I met on the plane. You got a baggage check? Yeah. Just a minute, Chuck, huh? Sure. Well, uh, oh. I'm sorry. This will have to be goodbye. Some business in town. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, too. It was nice meeting you. Goodbye. Goodbye. What's this all about, Chuck? Oh, I don't know. It's not my case. Kerrigan found out that we grew up in the same neighborhood, so he sent me by to pick you up. Oh. Well, nothing like having a cop for a pal, huh? <laughs> That's right. Kerrigan, what's next? Take it easy, Tony. We know why you came back, Regan. Oh, you do, huh? Who told you? Good sources. The tip tells us you're here to get Big Jim. You're kidding. I hear he rode you out of town seven years ago. So what? So it's four o'clock. Take my advice and be out of Chicago by seven. You've no right to order me any place. I'm not ordering. I'm advising. Look, if there's any charge against me, book me. No, there's no charge. So long, Chuck. So long. Cooper, tail him. Give me a squad car down front. Palmer House. Follow that camp. Thank you. 
Hello? Sally? Tony. Tony. When did you arrive? I got your telegram, but you didn't say anything about the time. Where can I meet you? How about Buckingham Fountain and say, half an hour? The fountain? Wonderful. I'll be there. I can't wait to see you, Tony. Goodbye, honey. Seven long years. I must have been crazy. You look wonderful, Tony. Just wonderful. Nobody else taking my place? No, Tony. Nobody. Look, honey, right now we've got to be a little careful. Why? Careful of what? Tony, what's wrong? That. Big Jim brought out the brass band just for me. Uncle Jim? Nobody else. He must have seen the telegram and tipped the cops. Tony, you might as well know this. Uncle Jim still doesn't like anything about us. I can't even mention your name to him. Oh, I can understand that. You're like a daughter to him. Me, I'm just a kid from a River Road gambling joint with wedding bells on my mind kid from one of his places, starting the way he started, doing exactly what he'd done. And I'm starting clean now. I'll talk to him. He won't listen. Oh, he'll listen. He'll yell some, then give out with the blessings. I hope so. Tony, let's not ask him. Let's not wait. Look, he's gonna be my uncle, too. We'll ask him. Then let me ask him first. Oh, no, this is my inning. I'll run a car and drop in on my future uncle. Tonight. All right. Come on. like he would with one hand. Let's get him in the car. Make it look like an accident.
evening, sir. I'll park it for you. No, I'm not getting out. Look, I had a little accident. I hurt myself. Do you know where I can find a doctor around here? I don't know. Uh, you wait a minute. I'll ask you inside. Attention. Attention, all cars at 103. Be on the lookout for Anthony Regan. Wanted for the murder of Big Jim Lee. This man was last seen at 9 p.m. in the vicinity of Briar Road and Kendall Avenue. He is described as a Caucasian, 5 feet 11 inches, weight 175 pounds, hair black, eyes brown, deeply tanned complexion, last seen wearing a light gray suit, light gray felt hat, black shoes, known to be wounded by gunshot. Take all precautions in approaching as he is armed. Uh, mister, uh, Repeat. Wally says there's a little emergency hospital over on location. South Avenue. Which way is that? Uh, that way a couple Wait, miles. Uh, pounds. turn left when you get to Air South Black. Avenue. Eyes brown. You hurt bad, mister? You want I should drive you down there? No, I'm okay here. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it. Hey, there's a gun. Yeah? Look, I want some bandage, some adhesive tape. I was just closing up, please. Some kind of sulfur. I got sulfur ointment I usually recommend. Okay. I'll be using your phone.
Lee, residence. Hello. Miss Lee, please. Just a moment. Miss Lee's not in now. If you'll hold on, I'll try to find out where she is. Who's this? When you were a kid, I called you Specs. You call me Bud. Tony! Hey, what's this I hear about you and Big Jim? A frame, Norm. Nothing to it. Look, I've got to have a place to hide out. Can you help me? Sure, Tony. Let me think. Just a second. Uh, no, Aunt Mary. I'm afraid we can't do it right now. Watch yourself. Cops are probably covering everybody you know. Good night, Aunt Mary. Here you are, sir. Dollar and a half out of five. Dollar and a half. Two, three, five. I'm sorry. Hey, give me a bicarb. Look. Look at my coat. That guy got blood all over it. Nice work. Keep the boys at it. I'll check with you at headquarters. That's unusual. Might be from a Jap Nambu. Let's get it to the lab. We've got the car Regan rented, picked it up in front of a drugstore. Fine. I'm going back now. You clean up around here. All right. Miss Lee, we're finishing up now. We should be out of here in a little while. If you want, I'll post a man here in case Regan decides to pay another visit. No, you won't have to. Don't you understand? Tony didn't do it. He couldn't. I wish I could agree with you, Miss Lee. But the facts add up. Here, you Ms. can't Sullivan. go in there. I'll see Miss Sullivan. It's all right. Let him in. Miss Sullivan. I had to see you. I just heard about it. Tell me it ain't true. Mr. Jim ain't dead. He was murdered, wasn't he? Who did it? You work for Big Jim? Gene has worked for my uncle many years. Just yesterday afternoon, Mr. Jim came for his car. He said I polished it fine. Said he could see his face in it, just like in a mirror. The best man I ever knew. Nobody better. Always took care of me. Took care of me good. Another bet? Mr. Regan? 
Come up. Good morning, Mrs. Prentice. You had a late visitor, didn't you, Miss McKnight? A visitor? You must be mistaken. Lovely day, isn't it? I thought I heard someone. There's no one here, Mrs. Prentice. You're mistaken. Oh. It was very nice of you to concern oh. yourself. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. I heard the radio at the grocer's. That's all they're talking about, the Lee murder. I didn't do it. I'll make some breakfast. Don't bother about me. I'm not hungry. Oh, I am. Just toast and coffee. Look, Ann, I've got to get out of here. Why? It was swell of you to help me. I want you to know I'm grateful. You'd be safer if you stayed here. I can't. Protecting me might get you into trouble. You're innocent, aren't you? Sure. Then I'm protecting an innocent man. A couple of thousand cops will disagree with you. What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know if there's anything I can do. You might call the police. What for? To tell them they're hunting for the wrong man. Oh, sure. Sure, I'll send Kerrigan a note and say, Dear Captain, I didn't kill Big Jim. Honest, I didn't. But you didn't kill him. There must be some way of explaining it. I've been framed, Ann. Frame cold. I'm front page news, a killer on the loose. If Kerrigan's men get me, he'll be a great cop. The DA will prosecute me, he'll be a public hero. And the guy that throws the switch, he'll be a public benefactor now. No, I didn't do it, but I can't prove it. You're not running away, are you? No, no. But where do I begin? What can I do? I haven't even got a lead. Somebody killed him, but who and why? You've been away a long time. Maybe Sally would know something. You said she was his niece. Yeah, she might. All I need is a start. Where's the phone? On the bookcase.
The Lee residence. If someone else is listening, they won't know me. Hello? Miss Lee, please. Tell her I'll meet her at the Buckingham Fountain. Tell her Mrs. Buckingham. Who? Uh, just a moment, I'll see. Uh, Mrs. Buckingham. Hello? Hello, Miss Lee? Yes? This is Mrs. Buckingham. You remember me. Huh? Mrs. Buckingham. Oh, yes, I remember. You do? It must be so trying with the police and all. I'd like to see you. In about an hour? All right, I'll be there. Yes, fine. Goodbye. She'll be there, Tony. Thanks, Anne. I'll drive you over. No. I can't let you take that chance. You let me worry about that. I telephoned you. Where's Tony? He's back of the aquarium. Thank you. so scared. Oh, Tony, I'm so afraid for you. Listen, Sally, who had it in for your uncle? I don't know. What about his old sidekicks, Swanson, Lambert, Eddie Carter? Would they know? He broke with them years ago. Can't you think of somebody? I can't. I don't know where to begin or whom to ask. Your boyfriend stands up, miss? Oh, no. No, no, he's late. He's always late. I wouldn't be. <laughs> Look, there's got to be somebody. What about Danny Morgan? Morgan? I didn't even think of him. But he couldn't help you. He's been out of town. Uh, I've got to get a lead, some kind of a lead. Tony, get out of Chicago. You can't play detective. You're on the wrong side of the law. Who says I am? I didn't kill Big Jim. I know, but the evidence. Evidence? Nothing. Listen, Sally, I'm not running away. Nobody's going to get a chance to shoot me in the back. What about Morgan? What does he do back? Tonight, I believe. Where does he stay? At the Ridgely Arms. Call him, will you? Tell him I need some help. Yes, Tony, I'll call him. I'm sure he'll help you. Thanks. Anne. What did she say, Tony? Not much. She's going to do something, but not much. It's up to me, and nobody but me. Here's my only chance. This is the gun that killed Big Jim, and then was planted on me. I've got to trace it. You can't trace it, Tony. No, I can't, but a certain friend of mine, a cop. The police? Well, I know what you're thinking. This certain friend of mine, if he wanted to, could help me. Could help me a lot. I won't be long. Be careful. Hands up. I'll go on. Put them up, will you? Isn't your name Reckling? Sure, Teddy Reckling. You know my pa? We're old pals. Teddy, for the last time, come to bed. 
Hey, well, there's a man to see Pop. Oh, good evening. You wish to see Charles? Yes, I ran into him the other day at headquarters. <laughs> I know. And he insisted you come right out and see his shortwave equipment. I'll show him where Pop is. Anything to stay up. All right, show the gentleman to your daddy and then come right back. And I mean it. This way, partner. Right with you, hop along. Down here, partner. Hold on there, cowboy. Didn't you hear your mother tell you to go back? Well, I'm going to stay with you and Pop. Come on, you better go back. Chuck. Don't. Hello, Tony. What do you want? Help. For you? Not even if I wanted to. Not even if I'm innocent? Just listen to me, Chuck. Teddy? Teddy, come here. For the last time. But, Mom, I gotta rescue Pop. That man's holding him up. I seen him through the window. You saw him, not seen him. Now, up to bed this very minute. But, Mom, he's got a great big gun. And... Oh, Teddy, hold up man guns. What you won't think up to stay out of bed. Now, up to bed now. I don't know. It's hard to believe. Harder to believe that you'd be fool enough to make it up. Never said you were going to get even when Big Jim ran you out of town seven years ago. I might have shut my mouth off then. I was a smart, know-it-all kid. It didn't mean anything. Three hours before your plane landed, Captain Kerrigan received a tip that you were coming back to rub Jim Lee. That's the reason he told you to blow town. Lee's orders, huh? Nobody orders Kerrigan except the chief and the commission. You're sure of that? Yes. Any idea where the tip came from? Kerrigan didn't say. Can you find out? Perhaps. Lee's valet opened the door. The killer made him turn around and slugged him. His description of the killer fits you like a painting. Clothes coloring the works. Now tell me you risk a concussion to be in on a frame. If he didn't, they picked a trigger man who looks that much like me. Fancy picking. Not very. Put five men out of ten in gray suits and hats. Did you see my picture? The only one we could dig up from your high school days. And? He said it sure looked a lot like the man. I had nothing to gain, everything to lose. He was keeping Sally from you. Not from me, from anyone in the syndicate. And I'm out. I was going there to prove it to him. And if he still objected? Sally promised to go with me no matter what he said. What would killing him have got me? A chance to marry a fortune. We ran his will down today. Everything he has, he left to her. It's plenty. Give me your left hand. What for? Oh, never mind, give it to me. You've still got the gun. There are four blood types. A, B, O, and A, B. I'll have the lab boys check this against the sample from the Lee home. If you're telling the truth, chances are three to one they won't match. Yes, and one to three they will. You won't be any worse off than you are now. Stay where you are, Chuck. Chance of tracing that? Jap Rambo, huh? Not much. And no bullet in the chamber. You couldn't have shot me if I had jumped you. I can now. How soon will you hear from the lab on that? On the blood by tonight. On this, probably never. Okay, I'll call you tonight. Thanks, Chuck. Tony, please watch out. What if someone in the lobby recognizes you? They won't. This is one of Lee's places. I used to live here myself as a private entrance.
Yes, sir. Something you wanted? Morgan, by the back way. Fixing to murder Mr. Morgan like you did Mr. Lee. He was my boss, my best friend. See? Give me this job and I always took care of me. And you. Shoot! to do, including me, if Miss Lee hadn't given me orders. That's nice to know. I come up for information from a guy I thought was a friend. Come on in. Jim was pretty close to me, you know. I know that. Well, let's forget it. I didn't do it, Dan. What do you want to know? Just a rundown on who might have done it. Almost anybody. Help yourself to anyone he moved in on or pushed aside. Add everyone he double-crossed. Throw in every sucker he clipped in his wheel rooms and horse parlors. Take a number from one to a thousand. Help yourself. Well, I can narrow that. It was somebody with help, two men at least. Somebody smart enough to give the cops a phony tip that I was gunning for Big Jim. Well, it could have been Jim's doing. Easy way to get the police to run you out of town. No, he wasn't like that. It was somebody else. Well, in the meantime, I'll work on it. I'll have the boys check for any bullet wounds doctored on the quiet. It's a good idea, and I'm pretty short of good ideas right now. Hey, don't tell me she said no. Give me a chance to ask her. I just got in from Reno. But I'm going to, just as soon as I get rid of you. Good luck, Dan. Anything you want, let me know. Thanks. Oh, what about our friend Gene? It's okay, I called him. Good. It's all right, he's gone. Danny, you should have let me call the police while he was here. What for? We can't tip the police. If we did, they'd start asking us questions. Suppose they find out about the bullet hole in my arm. Let him hang himself. We're staying out of it. Mm. All right, Danny. Syndicate's ours now, honey. What have we got to worry about? Hey, Mr. Ray. Mr. Morgan said I should give this back to you. I guess that means you didn't bump, Mr. Lee. No, I didn't. I'm sorry about it. Yeah, I know. Forget it. Big Jim used to call me his wife's dog. They got him when I wasn't around. But I'll get that guy someday. I'll get him. Chuck, have you got the lab report yet? Yeah, the analysis just came in. It's no go, Tony. Your blood is type B, the same as the sample we got from the Lee home. Four types, and that's got to be mine. What about the gun? Oh, the number isn't even registered. Fingerprints? Yours and mine, nothing else. Well, thanks, Chuck. OK. Sorry, Tony. I'm going now. I still can't figure this out. What? Regan's Nambu. I figured the man who gave it to me planted a few odd prints on it to take the heat off himself. Did he? 
Well, I've got his prints all over the outside of it, but inside it's as clean a wipe as they come. And no prints on the bullets? Or the barrel or the sleeve. Handing a gun over that clean doesn't make sense, unless he's telling the truth. Maybe I'd better talk with Kerrigan. Good night. Good night. Now, look, I'm breaking my head on this case, and if I have to, I'll break other heads. Nobody in Chicago is more anxious to solve this case than I am. All right. Yes, I will. Goodbye, sir. Come in. Oh, hello, Chuck. Hot night. You don't know how hot. Working kind of late, aren't you, Chief? No sense in going home. I got a telephone there, too. Everybody and his brother has been writing me, telling me the public wants action, the newspapers want action, civic groups want action. Got a cigarette? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's bad for the department. Bad for the department, nothing. It's bad for me. I can't forget about the anonymous tip. I can't forget that I had Tony Regan in person right here in this office. I ought to have booked him. Held him in the cooler until he cooled off and then shipped him out of town myself. What's on your mind? Same thing. You got anything better than this lead? It's Regan's work. We're tracing every torn out name. If we're lucky, this may be Regan's big slip. The one that will drop him right into the chair. Maybe not. What do you mean? I think we're closing in on the wrong man. Now look, Chuck. I'm tired and it's hot. Did you come in here just to tell me that? Listen, Chief, I saw Regan. You what? Yes, he came to my house to see he me. He came to your house? Yes. Did you let him walk out? Well, he had a gun on me. All right, he had a gun on you. And you just didn't bother to report it? The Nambu that killed Big Jim. I've got it in the lab. I've been he working on it. He was your friend, it. wasn't he? The kid who grew up with you. Now, don't try to tell me that didn't have anything to do with it. I'm a cop, and I know my business. I tell you, Regan had nothing to do with now it. Now, you listen to me. You're not talking like a cop. You're talking like a sentimental sap who had a chance to bring a killer in and didn't. You're talking like a suspended cop. So save your talk until Monday morning for the commissioner. That's all, Reckling. I heard you moving around. Is something wrong? And we're kidding ourselves. I can't stay here any longer. I'm going to see somebody I know first thing in the morning. Maybe he can fix it so I can get out of the country. You're running away. Yes, I'm running away. What am I supposed to do? I've tried everything. All right, Tony. If you're giving up that easily, go ahead. Run. Maybe you think dying in Joliet is better than being chased all your life, but I have to find that out. Oh, Tony, something... Look, Ann, forget it. I don't want to talk about it. All right, Tony. Good night. Wait. I'm sorry. But you've got to understand my side of it. Tony, Tony, I do. Please don't worry. We'll work this out together. Good night.
Miss McKnight. I'm Miss McKnight. What do you want? Tony Regan. Tony Regan? There's nobody here by that name. I know he's here somewhere. Huh. Nice way to greet a man who came to warn you. Warn me of what? Half the force will be here by this afternoon. The drugstore phone book was the tip-off. Page missing. They've been working on the names from McKee to McKnight since yesterday. And you picked this address just by instinct. I remembered a girl got off the plane with you. I sent for the passenger list to see if a name began with Mac something. I found it. Here I am. So? So that gun, Tony. That's the thing that convinced me. I think you were telling the truth. Thanks, Chuck. I hope this doesn't get you in a jam. When Captain Kerrigan found out I failed to file a report on your visit to me, he had me suspended. I'm up before the commission Monday. I have one chance to prove I was right. You know, we established the Lee shooting at 9.02. The All Cars broadcast you heard was at 9.33. That means it was 30 minutes from the time you were slugged at the Lee home here until you came to in the car opposite the cat's cradle here. Now, uh, the stop-off must have taken 10 minutes at least. Now, from here to here is seven miles, 14 minutes by car, with you in it and speed cops all around. That leaves six minutes for any detour to that room. Six minutes, three miles, a mile and a half away, a mile and a half back. There's your boundary. Somewhere in there is that long cement floored room and we've got to find it. I mean, that covers 10 square miles. Yes, but we've one help. If you're sure, that hall was a long one. Well, at least 100 feet. And straight? Straight as a rail. Well, then we know it's a big building, 100 feet long or wide. Now, here's the tax assessor's map, made up by the city engineering office. These uh, white spaces mean vacant. The light gray are single family dwellings, so we'll skip those. These we work on. Dark gray, large apartments, and black for commercials, factories, stores, warehouses. I'll search them all. We'll search them. Oh, you're too hot to ring doorbells. I'm not. Oh, you go with me. Call headquarters in case I go in somewhere and don't come out. I'll call Mork and he'll help. He has enough men to split up those places ten ways. Men nobody will keep out. Hello, let me speak to Dan Morgan, please. But I've got to reach him right away. Oh. Okay, thanks. He's at the Lee house. Are the police still out there? No. They've been taken off. Here, help us copy these addresses. We have to get out of here. Take this top row, will you? Yes, sir. I have to see Mr. Morgan right away. Please step in, sir. Tell him it's the man who called on him last night. Uh, yes, sir. Will you wait inside, sir? Tony. It's all right, dear. Everything's going to be all right now. Got any leads? No, but I've been working with some friends, and I think we can locate the room where I was shot. A room's a room. Well, that gets you. Well, it must be rented or owned by someone. It's bound to give us a lead. Well, I know, but to try to find one room out of a whole city. We've got it cut down to about a dozen blocks. Now, with the help of some of your men, we... Isn't that a job for the police? Why the police? We've got two men upstairs going over the old man's books. I'll get them. You phone Marty for more. All right. Don't phone from here. They might be listening. What about Marty? Tony said it'd be safer to call from next door. All right. Tell him to meet us at, say, the third address. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I'll make that call right away. Good luck.
is this, a gag? What? The well, third address is mine, the Ridgely Arms. Oh, it is? I didn't even know it was on the list. We'd be wasting our time down there. No, well, where to? Ridgely Arms. Maybe we can save my friends the trouble of searching it. Take it slow. See any of your friends around? No, no sign of them. You better back up one address. We'll wait here. Park in the garage. Morgan, there's a plainclothes dick here snooping. One of your friends? Yeah. It's all right, we're here to meet him. Where is he? Over by the storeroom. Well, glad you got here, Tony. Danny Morgan, this is Chuck Reckley, Frost Stoner. Hi. There'll be more coming. Oh, we won't need him. This is the place. Chuck, you must be wrong. This can't be the place. Of course it's the place. There's your 100-foot hall, and back there's a cement-floored storeroom with a bullet in the wall. Keep your hands down, copper. Hey, what kind of a double cross is this? A beauty chuck by the experts who frame me. My friend, Danny Morgan, who put his engagement ring on the girl I came back to marry. The girl who told him every move I made, who lied to give him that Reno alibi. Shut up. There's a girl outside. Get her. Jim Lee swore Sally would never marry anyone in the rackets, remember? They knew that, so they killed him and framed me for it. Now ask me who your trigger man is. Not Frost here, he couldn't have passed for me. Not Stoner with that mustache. Shut up. Okay, Danny. Here's your man with Jim's bullet hole in his arm. <laughs> They miss. Me? Are you Miss McKnight? Yes. Children, go into the classroom. Hurry. I'll be there in a minute. What did you want? I got orders to pick you up. But I don't understand what's happened. Hey, if you want to catch that plane, it leaves in less than 20 minutes. I hear your tickets. I'll have everything ready when you get to Reno. Oh, but Tony, there's so much to do. I've got to pack. I've got to move my furniture. I've got to resign my job. A million things. How long will that take you, huh? Well, if I rush, would tomorrow be soon enough? Come on, let's go. 